This was all my fault. I was an embarrassment. So he locked me in his boot for four days <laughs> and kept me there with no food, no water, no clothes, and just said, this is what I deserve. Like, this is what I've done. I wasn't good enough for him to keep it in his pants. So he had to go out and seek someone else. And this is what's happened. I'm Sophie Henson. I'm 24. I'm from Bridgend, and I'm a survivor of domestic abuse. I first met Zach through um, the father of my little girl. He was in our friendship group. Um, he was always just looking in the mirror. He was just, he was quite depressed at the time. He just lost his bum. Um, so he was just very reserved and just to himself. When I first met him, he was, I don't know, he kind of just started trusting me. He'd tell me a lot more things than he wouldn't tell the other people in the friendship group. Um, he was asking me to pick him up, to bring him up to the house, to see people. Um, so we kind of just like clicked in that sense. And then it got taken, it got took to social media and we just started texting all the time. Um, and then he needed to go to work. So then I started taking him to work in the morning. Um, and then his dad would like offer to pick him up in the, in the nights. Um, that kind of like worn off because him and his dad had a really abusive relationship. Um, so then after that, um, I started picking Zach up and taking him to work every morning and we were just still friends at this rate. Um, and then he needed somewhere to stay, so he asked if he could stay in mine for two weeks. Um, and I agreed, you know, and he was, he just wanted to stay there, just, he was trying to look for a place. Um, he was working, so, you know, he said he'd help and things like that. Um, and there was just no issue with my mum living there. Um, and he moved in then, all of a sudden, then that was the October of 2020. The verbal abuse started two weeks into it, so me and Zach started going out in the car a lot more, because um, I was taking him to work and things like that. Like, we kind of just, we kind of got into a relationship, you know, we was happy with each other, we were really besotted, you know, we never met each other, like, people like us before, sort of thing. Um, so, we got into a relationship, um, the first two weeks were like great. And then he said like living with my mum was a massive issue because um, she was living with me at the time, my disabled father. Um, so she just got a place at the time. So he asked her, he said, oh, can you ask her to move out? I said, oh, Zach, you know, she's been living here a long time. She helps with the children. Um, so Zach was like, no, this is this not standard. I can help with the children. You know, you come with this baggage. He was just calling me fat and everything. He was like, do you want to lose me? I'm a fucking king. So I asked her to move out. I just thought it was the right thing at the time. You know, I just, I was 19 and a half, no, about 26 stone at the time. I'd lost 19 stone then up to date when I was with Zach. And then he moved in and, he just got so bad. My The father of my little boy was texting me one day and he had said that, what time, can I drop Ollie off, I think it was. And Zach grabbed my phone and he chucked it. He was like, who's texting you? What boys are texting you? So I explained, it was just, it was just Ben, text about my little boy. Um, and he gripped my phone, went, ran down the stairs, checked for the meshes, make sure there was no other meshes like back and forth between us. Um, and he said, that can go through your fucking mother. That's nothing to do with you. Um, smashed my phone up. So then things were just like, just silent in the house. Um, I had just gone, I'd left to go down my friends and thought, right, I don't understand how boys act this way. You know, it was my first proper relationship. Um, so I went down my friends and then he was just texting me um, off my friend's phone saying he was sorry. Um, and then he showed up at her house then and strangled her and dragged me out. And then we went back home. And then it just, I just stayed with him then after that. It was just, it was just life. It was just normal. You know, this is how a real man treats you. Like he said, he was fucking gorgeous. He was the best I ever had. And because I was so big in my weight, I just thought, oh, he obviously wants me. You know, he's chasing me. He just, he tells me he loves me. You know, it must be true sort of thing. You know, he accepts my children. And then he was just in there sort of thing, feet under the table within two weeks. So my mum, when she first met Zach, Zach was laying in bed and my mum said, oh, Sophie, stop putting makeup on. And he said, oh, she fucking needs it. Don't tell her that. She'll think she's beautiful. So my mum kind of had a bit of a thing of like, oh, what's that all about sort of thing. So my mum was a very good judge of character. She always have been. Um, and when I asked her to move out, she was a bit like, 
well, what about the children? You know, what about dad? You know, things like that. And they'd been waiting so many years for a bungalow. So I kind of just like palmed it off to be a really good thing for her. Um, she just said from day one, she was like, I don't like him. I don't trust him. Um, he's just, it's something about him. And my dad was like really, really ill at the time when he was laying in his hospital bed and Zachman met him for the first time. And we left and he said to him that it was something about Zach that just wasn't right. You know, something was going on. It was, it was a lot more worse than what they thought it was going on. Um, so my mum just moved to a bungalow and she just left it as that then, you know, she just thought, right, she's getting on with her life, you know, she's telling me that she's overweight, is a boy that's really interested in her, he's doing really well for it, he works, what could possibly go wrong? And I hadn't been telling her, like, the little digs that I was having and, like, what, he'd talk about girls in such a sexual manner, it would just be awful you know his ex-partners he'd say it's always them like they always cheated on him it was just from the start it was just you need to give me sympathy if you don't give me sympathy then he doesn't want to know you know you had to build his ego you had to like tell him like he looked gorgeous you had to tell him like oh no your shoes look really nice today I had to clean his shoes with my toothbrush at one point when we first got together because I didn't clean them enough after we took the dog for a walk and because it was my dog at the time he was like, this is all your fault. He was just going crazy. When I made my decision for my mum to move out, um, I had like an inkling of something bad was gonna happen. But I just thought at the time, because I was overweight and this was my first proper boyfriend, I was just, I was never one to put myself out there. So I thought, oh, maybe it's just me overthinking it. It's just fat Sophie just thinking this, overthinking it, you know? So it was just like, maybe something could go right, stop pushing something that, you know, might be a really good thing. So my gut was there, that something was just wrong. It was just the way he used to do. It's, the first time it happened, he was in the car, we just drove back from his dad's and his eyes just went white and you would just see like, it was, and then his pupils would just go so black, his face would go pale and he was just shaking the car. Like he was so angry and I was like, whoa, like, what is this? But at this point now, he's moved his dog in, he's got his clothes there, he's got his own shoes rack, you know, like my clothes are out of the wardrobe, he wants everything hung up. I had to iron clothes before they went in there, you know, so it was a really strict procedure. It was like living an army life. Like he brought his dad's living to the house, so we'd be, I'd be on strict times to eat, strict times to sleep. Like when he was first going to work, it was 11 o'clock at night, I'd drop him off. I'd have to wait there until five o'clock in the morning. So I'd have to stay in the car all this period. I'd go home then for half past five. I'd have to clean the house. I'd have to clean his shoes. I'd have to do all his laundry, like everything, make the beds, make sure the house was spotless, pick him back up at six o'clock with like pre-rolled joints, the lot. It was just terrible. Picked him up from work then at seven o'clock. And then if I was 20 minutes late or five minutes late because of traffic, I must have been down my mother's. I must have been doing something with someone. It was just terrible. You couldn't, I had no breathing space. So then he'd come home from work at seven. He'd smoke a weed until like 12 o'clock midday. He'd make me go to sleep then with him from 12 till half past 10. It just have to be that cycle. I wasn't allowed to wake up and shower. Like if I was showering, it's because I was impressed on someone. Like I wasn't allowed to like wake up and do anything around the house until he was in work. So he knew what I was doing and didn't have enough time to prepare or nothing like that, you know? Every single day you're like, right, tonight I'm gonna leave him. You you take him to work, you would think, and then he kind of clocked that I was going to leave him. So then he started taking my keys, my car keys into work with him. So I couldn't leave the premises. If I walked, he would have clocked the car being empty, you know? So it was a lot more things than just being able to just like, I've had enough of this. You know, you couldn't, you had to stick to this routine. And then it was times then when he was like, bullying people in work and things like that. And then I'd have to ring his boss and say he wasn't well. Like he would never ring his boss. He'd never ring his company and say he was unwell to come into work. It was just always me. So then he lost his job then. And like the abuse just got just dreadful. Like you could just imagine it. It was times like he would just lock me out of the house. I had no clothes on. I'd go up his father's house and like, I was just completely, I had no clothes on. He'd be like, you're not coming to you. I don't want that drama. And like, he was close to his dad, but he wasn't. It was enough to like always forgive him if he needed something. 
So um, his dad just kept me outside, sent a video of me on the doorbell cam, like just no clothes on at three o'clock in the morning. I get home and I'm like, well, what can I do? I can't get through my flat. So I try and get through the little window. And then I'm like, if I ring the police, like something bad's gonna happen. You know, I have children, you know, so everything was going through my head at this point. Zach let me in then at six o'clock in the morning. He was like, oh, you know, how was that like, you know, training? I'm like, training for what? And he's like, no, we're gonna be strict. We're gonna be, you know, I'm gonna tell you when to eat. We're gonna weigh up your food. I'm gonna tell you when to sleep. So it helps your body, you know, I can't be with a fat, like I can't be with a fat girl. Um, so then in the March then of 2021, we bought a horse. He's, Cause he lost his job and he said he just lost his mum. He had to have a horse cause that was his big dream, you know? Um, so I bought him a horse out of my savings and he was, we moved to like a yard in Lantricent and go in there, he was just pulling the car off the road. He was, he was punching all my wings, all my uh, windscreen and everything. Um, so we got to the horse one day and he pulled my trousers down and he just, he was just constantly slut shaming me. He was pushing me over the yard. He was trying to get the horse to kick me. And there was some other woman up there who fancied him at the time and kind of was just laughing at these antics. <clears throat> and was just saying like, this is okay, you know, sort of thing. So then we moved yards because it was caught on camera, the owner threatened to take it to the police. Um, we moved to like down by Puth Call then, um, where Zach met another woman and we was on this horse yard and this woman had a husband who was the farmer. So Zach initially got our horse shot then in the July of 2021. So we only had about two months with this horse and then um, I'd gone down that morning, this woman's ringing me. She's saying like, look, so I've come down, your horse has been shot. Zach ripped me by my hair, launched me down the stairs. We're like, get in that fucking car. This is all your fault. So we drive up the horse yard and um, the horse is just laying there. The farmer's up there with his gun. He said he was just trying to shoot foxes at the time. Um, it's a recent offence. When I have spoke to the father later on, uh, the farmer later on, he have said it was because they were sleeping together. They've been caught like I think about three times. So it was all over Facebook, and apparently this was all my fault. I was an embarrassment. So he locked me in his boot for four days, <laughs> and kept me there with no food, no water, no clothes, and just said, "This is what I deserve. Like this is what I've done. I wasn't good enough for him to keep it in his pants. So he had to go out and seek someone else." And this is what's happened. March then after that August of 2022, it was my birthday and I thought, oh great, you know, it's gonna be a good day now, you know, it's my birthday, what could go wrong? He's gonna really help me. Zach wouldn't buy me cards, he wouldn't buy me presents, cause like his father never done that for him, you know, so. I was always the one to buy him a car. I was always the one to buy him a provisional. I put him through his driving lessons. The lot for his birthdays. But when my birthdays came, he was texting a girl. My mum had just given me 50 pounds and said, look, go to your mum's house. She'll think you're a right smackhead. You've lost all this weight. Like you look skin and bone. Like I had lost 19 and a half stone from 26 stone then. So I was down to like 13 stone, I think it was. So I was tiny, like completely. I was in size six clothes. Like my clothes were falling off me. Went down to mum, she saw happy birthday, it's nice to see you. I hadn't seen her in nearly a year by this point. And um, I said, oh, mum, I said, please can you give me some money? You know, Zach needs weed, like I need fags. I need to keep my, I need to keep him happy. If I don't keep him happy, like God help, like I don't know what to say, you know? So she knew abuse was going on at this rate. She was ringing police on me, getting welfare checks. Um, I just kept ringing her. She'd come to my house and I'd just have to like, tell her to fuck off. I was like, please leave me alone. I don't want you here. You're not my mother. Like, and he would be standing just behind me, behind the curtain going like, with my arm behind my back, twisted. And if it wasn't good enough, the insult, my arm would be twisted, be like a Chinese being on my arm every time. Um, and then, so my mum had left my property at this rate. I had 50 pounds off it. We was driving through the country lanes and he was texting girls as he normally does. And I was like, oh, Zach, please not today. You know, out of every day, like just 
it's not today. He chucked his phone on the floor. I was still driving, gripped me by my throat, launched me to the side of my window and was just screaming, you don't fucking tell a king no. So I was like, right, okay. So I pulled the car over and he was just going mayhem. My whole face was all smashed up. He was smashing on the steering wheel. He was pulling my face, hitting it on the gear stick, just everything. The volume just kept turning up and down. That's all I can remember. It's just the volume was just getting so loud in the car. Um, he ran out and ran five, mi five miles back to his father's house um, and just left me in my car. I was ringing his father and I was like, look, he's left me with his phone. I can't get hold of him. What's going on? It's my birthday. He's like, well, the fucking idiot, I won't come here. So I thought, right, okay, I'll go search I'll go look through these lanes. You know, I just didn't know what to do. He, was, he had no shoes on, you know, it was just hectic. It was my birthday. I had no one, you know, my mum was like done with me at this rate because I was just lying to her. My uncle couldn't get involved because like, it just wasn't fair to the family, you know? Um, after this then, Zach had eventually gone back to his father's after two hours. It took, it took him like two and a half hours, I think it was, to get back there. And um, his dad rung me and was like, oh, the fucking idiot here, come and get him. We've got presents for you, but he's just chucked them in the bin. So I was like, all oh, right, okay. So I went to his father's, picked him up, um, went back to the house and he just switched. He was like, oh, give me a kiss then, you know, sort of thing. I was like, oh, right, okay, this is a bit weird, you know, just done all this. You got mud up to your like ankles a lot. Um, and then he chomped down on my lip and like tried to rip a piece of it out. And he was like, oh, I never realized how hard it was to bite someone's lip off. And I was just like, oh my God, my lip is just everywhere. He starts smashing up my house a lot. This is all on my birthday. And I was just like, Zach, please calm down, calm down. Um, so he leaves the house, then goes back up his dad's. So I locked the door. I thought, right, that's it. Now I, I'm just done. I just can't take any more. At this point, I just sent my kids to go and live with my mum. They weren't safe in my house. If I wasn't safe, then dread to think what they were. And I wasn't putting them and, under that pressure. If I wasn't responsible enough to like be a decent human being and just leave and just think of the consequences later. So I thought, right, just give them to my mum for a minute. She'll be, they'll be fine there. So I thought, right, that's it. I'm just taking my own life. I cannot be bothered for this anymore. Like, it was mad. Zach's come zooming back down to the house, banging the door, banging the door. At this point now, I'm like halfway to like passing away. Like I've just taken like so many tablets and just, I'm out of it completely. He's banging the door, he's kicked the door through. He's like, I know there's another man here. I know there's another man here. Picks me up by my chest, chucks me into the bath. So all my head's cracked open. I guess the like uh, the coldest part of the shower starts spraying like all at me or like all of my private parts spray me in the face or on jet wash just with cold cold water like I'm going to learn not to treat like cheat on him and then he put it on boiling hot water then he was going to summon the devil that was out of me like if I had slept with anyone else all of it would burn so he's putting a really hot shower then at me was just trying to really hurt me so then after that, then we just gone to bed. It was just like another day of it. It was just like, right, it's just gonna be like this tomorrow. So just calm was, down sort of thing. That was your birthday? Uh, that was all my birthday, yeah, sort of thing. I feared for my life so many times, like you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> like he wouldn't just be like quiet about things. He'd be very loud and proud. Like he was king, like nothing could stop him. He was unbeatable. The authorities were nothing, you know. He was above all that. He was always like, um, if you do this little thing, I can do bigger, better, you know. And he'd always put me down. Like he'd have me in like a mirror, you know, screaming at me. And he'd hold my head to the back of my head and he'd go forward. And if I didn't repeat them, so like near enough closer to the mirror, he'd start saying like, tell me you're sleeping with your father. Tell me you're sleeping with your brother. I need to know the truth. You need to tell me the truth. And I'd be like, Zach, please don't make me repeat this. I don't like it. It's not happening. And he just smashed my head into the mirror so many times, chucked me on the bathroom floor. He'd cut the light so I couldn't reach it. So then it was like a pull down light. Turn, turn that light off. He'd tie the bathroom. I'd be locked in there for so many times. He'd be screaming at the door, punching it. Like, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. I know you're sleeping with them. Do you want me to choke you like a chicken? And I'd just be standing there like, Zach, I'm not doing this. All my face was just cut. I'd have little shards of glass in my, like, just under my eye. So, like, I was never, ever tended to by, like, medical care, nothing. Um, he'd just call them times out. He'd be like, you're a naughty fucking slag. You're in timeout. He just constantly just 
just be battering the door, like saying some brutal things, you know. The day, like, he all kicked off with him, like, trying to murder me. Um, we'd gone to my cousins. Um, he had a bit of a disagreement with them. Um, they didn't like him anyway, you know. Everyone in the family hated Zach, and it was just plain and simple. He knew it, he felt it, you know, he hated them too. So he allowed my dad's funeral for half an hour. Um, I wasn't allowed to say my byes to him because in case any men hugged me. So it was just me and my family just hated him. You know, we got drunk in the wake and he just started like burning out some really nasty stuff in my family, just saying everyone was sleeping with each other. Like we was all fucked up. Like my dad being dead was a good thing because like now we ain't got to worry. Now it's all the eyes are on Zach. We can all look after Zach. So after that then, um, he, he, we was just driving past as as he chucked the car keys out. So I had to get back out the car, run and grab them. Drove, he drove then up a country lane. He was driving about 60, 70 miles per hour, just screaming at me, screaming at the wheel. And he was like, you're doing this, you're doing this. I was like, Zach, please calm down. The dogs are in the back, you know, stop it. He was like, oh, we're all gonna fucking die in this car. We're all fucking dying. So he started aiming for a tree then about 70 miles per hour. We go over a hedge. The car conks out because a, a stone have hit the bottom of the engine. So we're just literally just balancing on this river, on this like bank now. And I was like, oh my God. So he gets out of the car. He was like, fucking fix this, fucking fix this. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, this is a brand new car. I've just bought, you know, I was just all over the place. So I drove out, I drove, got in the car, I drove out of the place, out of a cow field it was. And uh, he gets back in the car. He's like, right, if anyone sees it now, you're on camera. So it looks like you've done this any criminal damage is on you. He was constantly one, like one step all the time in front of everyone, you know, he knew what to say, he knew what to do. Um, so then he took me up there in this country lane after we got out of the cow field. And we'd just seen our horse at the time, got back in the car, we were sitting there, just sitting there, just watching a film and he just went absolutely mental. He just started kicking off, he started strangling me. He was just spitting in my face. He was just saying everything he could about like my mum and dad. And at this time I was 36 weeks pregnant. So I hadn't been for a scan. I hadn't been for like a gender thing. So I didn't even know how the baby was. He wouldn't let me tell anyone. He kept me wearing like really baggy hoodies. He was like, people just think you're fat again. So it's fine. Um, he was making me ride the horse. And then he was trying to kick the horse when I was on him. So the horse would like initially go mental. So he would kill me. So so um, I was sitting in the car and he was hammering shit into me and I was like, Zach, please stop. My nose is bleeding everywhere. Like all my neck is just full of scram marks and his deepest chicken scratches. Like his nails were so sharp and he dragged his, like, his nails through my skin. Um, so then he got out the car and dragged me out then over the passenger seat from the driver's side. Uh, dragged me up on the main road and he was like, right, I need to fucking put you somewhere, you stay in here. So a car started driving down and he was like, get back in the fucking car. And I was just like, Zach, I can't get up. Gripped me by my head, chucked me back in the car, um, just started hammering my head against the window, against the steering wheel. He was like, I'm just fucking sick of you, just screaming at me like this baby's gonna die. He started gripping my stomach and just wedging it and started punching me in the stomach. He was like, it's gonna fucking die. Like, I don't want it, I don't want you. It's not my kid. And he just told everyone it was. So in his head, he's like, right, the whole world knows it's my kid, but she knows it's not, and that's not good enough. So it was just absolutely crazy. Um, when I got pregnant, like me and Zach were split up for the first time around, you know, he, he kidnapped me and my daughter for three days and left us in the woods and told her he was gonna watch him and be murdered. Um, it was just terrible, you know, just didn't know what to do with him all the time. So the final straw was initially going up to the mountain and then being told, you know, like, this is it, like, we have to, well, I was 36 weeks pregnant, you know, I had an unborn baby in my stomach. He's just hammered my stomach. I can't feel movement. The baby was moving like five, 10 minutes prior to this. I just think he felt the stress of my whole body. You know, he was going into shock. I was like going unconscious from him strangling me and then getting woken up by just having punches to my face and blows to my eyes. Um, he was hammering my head against the car bonnet at one, way, at one rate. Um, and I just thought, oh, I just can't do this. I've protected this boy so much. I've hid so much. Police have come to my house and I've told them like, it's not him. It's just my parents. They just, 
they don't like him. You know, I've defended him so much. I've bought him horses. I've bought him a car. I've bought him teeth. I've bought him like it's everything he's ever wanted. I've done, I've lost all this weight and I just wasn't good enough. I like proved I was, I was loyal. I proved all these things that I was good enough and it just was never good enough for him. Like I wasn't ideal. I wasn't what he wanted. You know, I was something, I was a stepping stone. I was like always one way, like one, step away from dying with him, you know, it was just, he wasn't happy, you know. Why, why, why do you think he's like this? Um, I think he's like this because his father was an alcoholic who used to beat him down, who used to leave him in woods to like use as training as because his father was in the army, he had such a high stance, you know. Um, and like you see on Zach's old Facebook, black eyes from when his dad used to put him in boxing rings with older men, you know, and just little things. And then his mother never wanted Zach. Like his mother was just so happy for his father to take him because his father was abusive towards his mother. So it, it started at a really young age. Zach knew what was happening. He'd like set his mum up with his dad, you know, say, mum, pick me up from here. And his dad would actually show up. So it was a lot going on behind the scenes before I came, in, came involved. And then when Zach was with his ex-partner, he was just terrible towards her. And his mum was alive at the time. And uh, he pushed her down the spit of stairs. He'd headbutted her, he spat in her face. So he was just never close to his mum. He never had a mother's love, you know, he just, he was just a one man sailing band sort of thing. After the incident happened up on the mountain, um, I got back in the car, he'd ran off to the woods and I thought, right, great, this is, this is what I can do now. I can just go, he's left the car keys. I got in the car, I just drove to like this old church. I was just screaming, I was just like so shocked. I was like, he's gonna pop out from these woods any second. Like he's not gonna give me a chance, he's not gonna let me go. Um, so then I drove to like an old church and I thought, right, it's just, give it a go, you know, knock the door. It was the only house there out of like a 30 mile radius. Like it just was so out of the like area, you know, sort of thing. An old couple answered, he answered the door and he was like, you're not the first to come in. And just from that reaction, I was like, oh my God, someone else have been here from this whole thing, you know? So I parked my car up. I thought, right, I parked it quite a while away. So it was nowhere near this house. I got I went, got taken into the house and then this old man was like, let me put my urinate in, you know? He was really lovely, bless him. He was like, oh, you're not the first woman to ever come here. A 16 year old actually went there like five months prior, you know, from her father doing it to her. So I thought, great, that's fine, you know, I'm okay. His wife came down from, up, from upstairs. I, they were like, right, ring someone. I was like, I need to ring my dad, I need to ring my dad. And I was like, right, okay. So I sat down and they were like, here's the phone, ring your dad. And I was like, oh my God, my dad's dead. So I'd like, I don't know what was over me. Like, I just, like, I need to ring my dad. So I rang my uncle in the, like, so it was the last resort, you know, I rang him and I said, look, it's happened. And he was like, where are you two? He picked me up. And it was like 15 police officers waiting outside that hospital that had dealt with me for over four years from all the times I said, no, it's nothing, you know, and like the times they used to put shine torches in my eyes to be like, what's going on? I can see you've got black eyes. And I'm like, it's from the horse. Like I got a little child, she headbutts me, you know. So a lot of things were going on um, that I just, that I didn't tell them. And they were there waiting for me. It was like, if I had a red carpet, it would have been that massive entrance sort of thing, you know? Um, and then I just got taken in and he was like, you're not dropping charges. You were pressing charges. Otherwise, like, this is it. They put like an Osmond warning out of my life for 72 hours. And that was on the Friday. And then on the Monday, then he actually tried, when it ran out, he actually did try and kill me. So the police knew he was going to kill me. Um, and the only other woman in Wales that got issued that Osmond warning, her ex-partner set her on fire. So it was a really big deal at the time. Um, so then I just wrote a statement. I was in the hospital for like three days. You know, the baby was perfectly fine. You know, it didn't take any damages. Um, and just Zach got arrested. And then I found out the day after he was remanded. And I think then I knew like, so when he's out, something bad is gonna happen. Like he's not a happy boy, you know, like the stuff he's doing just naturally, he's just not happy, you know. These like little isolated attacks, they weren't just one, it was numerous. Zach had more charges that were recorded, but like, because he took a guilty plea right at the end, five charges got dropped. He was initially charged with attempted murder, strangulation with intent to kill, 
intent to kill an unborn baby, cohesive control and GBH. And he took a guilty plea on the last minute and just got done for strangulation with no, um, with no violence and cohesive control. Um, and it was just left as that. And he got sentenced to 21 months then in January. So red flags, I would definitely say is they have no friends. They have nothing going for them. They can't hold a job down. They don't have a really good relationship with their parents when it comes to um, love and support, um, emotional care. It doesn't matter about how big their family is. I definitely say the red flags are like when they're trying to impress themselves, impress you and everyone else around you, you know, things change and their demeanor change. Um, like just, there's so many red flags you can go by, you know, there's a lot that just, even how they talk about themselves, if they're talking about themselves and bragging about themselves, just leave. You know, everyone can feel self-confident, but I think making yourself out to be a king and a, a something against everyone else, it's not. What would you say to someone in a similar situation? Um, I think everyone says that and they like it, just leave. It's fine, you know, but I get it. You can't just leave and you have to make these preparations, but they don't mean nothing. As soon as you leave them, these preparations mean nothing. They just mean like you're taking that extra minute longer for them to kill you. You know, it's going to run out soon enough. Like you haven't got time. You haven't got options. The only option is, is just to leave them, get on with their life before someone ends up in jail that you don't want. And then you've got to go through court or you're going to end up dead. And then if you've got children or you've got parents, like they don't want that for you, you know, no parent buries their child nowadays, you know, it's, it's not how life happens, you know. So I'd 100% say for people to stay away from like people like that, um, you're not going to get anywhere. It's just, it's just going to keep going on and on and on. And people out there really care and people do love you and those people don't like that partner that's telling you not to wear those clothes or that partner that's degrading you in front of your friends, they really don't love you. They're out for themselves. Um, that's it, really.